Hello, my friends. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. I pray that you're having a great day. I'm in a little more of a, a somber mood. It's always a joy to speak to you. But uh, with the things that are going on in our country today, I tell you, uh, I, I pray that you are praying for our nation. Um, Saturday, May the 14th, around 2.30 p.m., and you've heard it, you've heard it, um, an 18-year-old, Peyton uh, Groundy, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, of Cochran, New York, where Buffalo, New York, at Topps Friendly Supermarket, a supermarket in the predominantly black neighborhood in western, in western New York area. I've been in the western New York area. I've been to Buffalo. I've been to Rochester. I have friends up there. Some of the wonderful, I know some wonderful people of God who live in the area. Ten people were killed. Three people wounded. Um, murdered because of the color of their skin. Of the three people wounded, two were white. The ten people who were killed, they were black. And you know, you've heard it, just this past Tuesday, May 24th, 11.32 a.m., shooter, an 18-year-old, Salvador Ramos of Uvalde, Texas, went to uh, an elementary school, school, Rob Elementary, and uh, murdered 21, uh, 19, excuse me, innocent children. 19, two adults were killed. 17 additional people were injured. This is horrible. This is wicked. But I want to add something, and I need you to listen to me now. I need you to listen because... I want to find out, I, I want to talk about who the true culprit is, who the true murderer is. I want to connect some dots. I want to connect some dots. Now, I just said on uh, May the 24th uh, that 19 children was killed. Now, my friends, I misspoke. 19 children were not killed on that day. The truth is... Uh, 2,382 children uh, were, were killed, if not more. Because in this country, and nobody gets up in arms about it, well, I can't say nobody, but uh, not enough people in this country, in America, every day, 2,363 children who are innocent as well are killed or murdered. They've committed no crime through abortion. And I'm moved by these talking heads on television, these politicians, these uh, entertainers who are so upset and so moved and so up in arms, uh, entertainers, basketball coaches, football coaches, athletes, these people, some of these people who are so bent out of shape, some of these daytime talk show hosts and hostesses who have been just irate for the last two or three weeks since uh, the illegal leaking of a document that shows that a life-saving measure may take place. Roe v. Wade may be overturned by the Supreme Court. Who's to benefit from Roe v. Wade being overturned? Children? Children? Oh, yes, and children. Who, who, uh, have suffered the loss as a result of Roe v. Wade. Who's been the major victim of the passage of Roe v. Wade since 1973? Millions, 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 do you hear me, of 
children. They just happened to be unborn, but they were children nonetheless. And you see some of these politicians who actually argue for late-term abortion, where the kid is fully developed, and yet they're, they're pretending that they're all upset about these 19 wonderful children who should be alive today, 19 households that are grieving that should not be grieving today, two wonderful teachers, two adults who uh, should be alive today. Oh my God, how horrible it is. But what about this 2,363 deaths that take place in America every day? Wouldn't why you bringing up abortion? You got to see it. If you don't see it, then, 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 then this may be part of the problem. When children are not safe in the womb, do you think that they're going to be safe in the classroom? When the most dangerous place for an unborn baby is the womb of its mother, do you think that a classroom would offer protection and solace? I prophesied years ago. And I said that when we dehumanize the unborn, when we cheapen the life of the unborn, it won't take very long for all human life to be cheapened. I've said this, my friends, and I didn't say this the other day. I said it years ago. And the problem is too few of us will say these things. You got to connect the dots. I'm old enough to remember when a pregnant woman was sacrosanct in society. You wouldn't argue with it. You wouldn't dare hit her because she was with child. But oh, when Roe v. Wade became the law of the land. I remember when President Bill Clinton said, let's keep uh, abortions uh, uh, safe and rare. Safe and rare. I always... Uh, one to say for whom, but at least uh, the, the goal was rare. Well, they don't even try, they don't even say that now. Uh, safe, legal, and rare. They don't even say that now. Uh, uh, people advocate for abortion all the way up to the day of birth and some after birth. And, and, and you don't understand why an 18 year old will pick up a gun and go to a school or we'll go to a grocery store and target people for the color of their skin, target little children and kill them dead. Do you think that the assault on the womb, on the unborn, the devaluing of these lives, do you think that that has nothing to do with it? That human life has been reduced to the whelms and the desire and the want of the mother. If she wants to keep the baby, then she should be allowed to keep the baby. If she don't want to keep the baby, there's nothing wrong with the baby. The baby's not sick. The baby doesn't threaten the life of the mother. Now I'm speaking, Gary, about uh, eight, 98% of abortion. That's, that's not threatening the life of the mother or anything like that, but she just don't want it. And it's her choice. It's her right to choose. You don't think, my friend, that, that 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 doesn't cheapen human life? You doesn't think you don't think that that cheapens life for all of us? And I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, I've had it up to here with people coming against an inanimate object. Oh, we have <laughs> gun violence, gun violence, gun violence. I guess they tested that and they saw that, that that resonates with people. Now, it's a lie. Guns are inanimate objects. I don't want to insult your intelligence, but uh, I'm giving somebody who's watching a revelation. It's an inanimate object. It's, it's like this uh, laptop here. It, if I set the gun here, 
the gun in and of itself would do no good and it would do no harm. It wouldn't bother a soul. If I left it here for the next 20 years, it would not affect anything. It wouldn't take anybody's life. Not at all. Not at all. Now listen, my friends. Uh, every year, 41,000 Americans die from gun violence every year. Now that's an average of 110 per day. That's 110 too many, but uh, that's hardly 2,363 that die from abortion per day, which is worse. Both are bad, but which is worse? 2,363 that die from abortion or 110 that die through gun violence? And, and how dare people uh, argue uh, about gun violence when you got to pick up the gun, you got to aim the gun, you got to buy the gun, you got to do all these things for that inanimate object to do anything to anybody. We've witnessed in society just in these last two accounts where guns were used to do incredibly evil things and guns were used to bring about tremendous good, good because in both cases the shooters were stopped by people with guns. We don't have a gun problem in this country. We have a people problem. We have a people problem. And you know where, where, uh, where, where I believe the root of the people problem comes from. This nation has turned its back on God. And not only the nation, but many of the preachers. You, you guys sound more like agents of the CDC. People who have joined the church of Fauci. People who preach political solutions rather than telling people to turn to Jesus Christ and stop and stop legalizing immorality. I've had many friends that tell me, wouldn't you can't legalize your morality? And I respond to them and saying, well, you can't legalize your immorality. The truth is morality is already legal. It's nature. When a woman gets pregnant, you don't have to help her. Women were having babies before hospitals were created, was built. Before the first hospital was built. Before the first hospital room. Before the, <laughs> all that. They were giving birth to babies and people lived. So here we are. I'm going to talk tonight about this people problem that we have. Oh, there ought to be background checks. Both shooters passed the background check. We ought to have st stricter gun laws. What are we going to do? Uh, disarm the law-abiding people, because my friends, criminals are not going to surrender their weapons. The criminal element, which is a small majority of the people in this country, do you think we should disarm the overwhelming number of law-abiding citizens who have never shot and killed anyone, who have never murdered anyone, uh, we, you think we ought to disarm them and leave us all at the mercy of the crooks, of the Salvadors, of the patrons of this world who will walk into a supermarket and don't know a thing about those people other than their color is not like his and just shoot and kill people. Let me tell you something. If all you see in that is racism, you're not looking. 
if, if all we see in uh, Salvador Ramos' attack on children, if all you see is a coward not looking, there's a disease going on in our country. And our disease is the disease of godlessness. It's a disease of uh, unrighteousness. The Bible teaches righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We need Jesus. We need preachers to preach the gospel from their pulpits with power and authority and with the anointing of God and to declare that men's hearts need to be changed. God bless the politicians, but, but they can't fix this. They can't fix this. You, you're not going to be able to eliminate and pretend that there's no such a thing as a Second Amendment. And no, I'm not for everybody having any kind of firearm that they want. And, and, and thank God there are laws in place to uh, prevent that. And uh, I think that there needs to be uh, background checks and things like that. And, you know, if I'm not mistaken, Brother Gary, both shooters posted their intentions. So, hey, when people read the stuff, do you, do you not take it seriously? Don't you think in this day and time, if somebody posts and say they're getting ready to do something crazy, that, that, that something ought to be done, that somebody ought to look at it, the authorities ought to be called. Hey, family members, you know when your uh, 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 family, your loved ones are acting kind of weird, you know, I know, don't, I know you don't want to, you don't want to turn uh, little Johnny in, but you may have to. And I'm going off, but you know, while you all was criticizing Preachers like me who argued even during the shutdowns, keep your churches open. Keep your churches open. Both of these men, according to reports, and the reports may change, but both of these men, during the shutdowns, spent time online, spent much time online. Uh, the shooter out of Buffalo says he got radicalized online, reading filth, reading garbage, reading racist garbage. Oh my God. Playing all these video games and uh, uh, where the, the, you're shooting people and all this stuff. We have become victims of these cell phones, vic of these, these, these computers, victims of technology. People don't even live anymore in the real world. I've warned many of the believers, hey, stop putting everything you do online. You know, Pam and I, we go out like other people. You, you wouldn't know it. We go to restaurants. We go on vacation. We do things. We just don't feel the need to share everything with you. But one reason is we're not that interesting. And, 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 and the other reason is, uh, friends, it, it's, it, we're not narcissists. These people, Brother Gary, have lost their mind. They're, play, they're placing online, I'm on my way to the store. Mm, watch me drive my car. Yes, yes, I'm driving my car. I'm on my way to the joint, going to the bathroom. Come on. Come on. So you wonder why a kid, uh, uh, well, not a kid, an 18-year-old man would get online He's shut down and he's reading garbage. He's, he's, he's ingesting filth. He's, he's isolated. Oh, you're hearing, you're hearing all the reports now of the effects of the lockdowns. Thank God we came out of church. Thank God, thank God. I, I had people try to say that, that we were being irresponsible. People holding their breath say, oh, death's going to break out. Oh, I can't wait until COVID gets wooden. Well, you've been waiting for a long time and you're going to keep waiting. And you better get delivered before it gets you. You can't criticize people and accuse people of being irresponsible for obeying God's word. Yes, I'm angry about all of this. 19 children. I'm a grandfather. 19 kids who should be alive today. 19 families, 21 families in all who are grieving the senseless death. All those wonderful people up in Buffalo. 10 families lost, shot to death. What did they do? What was their crime? What did they do wrong? Nothing. When you dis 
like or hate a person based on the color of their skin, whatever that color is, you are in effect saying, I hate that individual because when you say I hate him for the color of their skin, you are saying you also hate the God who made them that color in the first place. I tell you what we got in this country, we got a bunch of God haters. That's what we got. We got a bunch of God haters. And we need more God chasers. The true culprit, it's not guns. It's not an inanimate object. It's wicked, godless individuals who need Jesus Christ, who need to be born again. Oh, who needs mental help. And you know, these, you know, uh, I heard one of the politicians, I got to go, Gary, we're running long, but I heard one of the politicians talking about the gun lobby and how much money the NRA is spending lobbying uh, politicians. What did the NRA sp uh, spend? What, a couple of million? Let's see what Big Pharma is spending. Now, there's your money there. And they're spending money to keep all of us all doped up, drugged up, all these designer do uh, 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 drugs that's supposed to deal with this mental problem, that mental problem. They're not working. <laughs> People are getting worse. And, and even in the church world, you know what we're saying now? Hey, there are some things that the gospel can't cure. Hey, the, you know, sometimes people need professional help, like the preacher's not a professional. Hey, you know, listen, hey, hey, we need to turn people back to the cross. Hey, we need to remind people that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. We need to remind people that over 96 or 97 times the Bible mentions the mind in Scripture. God hadn't forgotten about your mind. God cares about your heart. My friends, God cares about you. Now, I've gone way over time today, but I want you to meet me here. If you think I had something to say tonight, I'm going to show you the problem. In uh, the word of God, the Bible, my friends, is right. Meet me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yes, Bible study. We're going to study the word of the Lord together, and hopefully by then I will have calmed down a little bit. But we're killing the unborn. They're not safe in the womb. When you're not safe in the womb, you're not safe in the classroom. Who is the real culprit? Is it that inanimate object? Or is it the hand that wailed that inanimate object? And the heart and the mind that controlled that hand? And the culture that influences that mind. The godlessness of our culture, the violence of our culture, the immorality of our culture that influences the mind, that influences the heart, that influences that hand that picked up that inanimate object. You think about it. See you tonight.